often near the sun, celestial bodies can be observed, the matter of which, in the vicinity of our hot star, evaporates and is carried away from it by cosmic winds. These evaporating celestial bodies are called comets. Many scientists believe that comets trace their path from very remote regions of the solar system, as evidenced by their elongated orbital shapes. But where do they come from, and how do they manage to reach us? Hello, dear friends. In today's video, we would like to tell you about one of the most fascinating phenomena in the solar system, the Oort cloud. But before we dive in, we'd like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you won't miss out on our new and exciting videos about the mysteries of space and our planet. Every year, astronomers observe the movement of around a dozen comets. The question of where they come from intrigued scientists worldwide until Estonian astronomer Ernst Peak proposed in 1932 that there might be a spherical region on the outskirts of the solar system containing a large number of comets. His idea was further developed 20 years later when Dutch astrophysicist Jan Oort suggested in 1950 that comets with long orbital periods are formed in one place, a cloud surrounding the inner space of our solar system. Since then, this region has been named the Oort Cloud. But let's first understand what long-period comets are. There are two classes of comets, short-period and long-period. Short-period comets move along relatively short orbits, with periods of revolution not exceeding 200 years. Long-period comets, on the other hand, have enormous elongated orbits, spanning several thousand astronomical units. To give you a better understanding, one astronomical unit is practically 150 million kilometers, or 93 million miles. Comets with long orbital periods have highly elongated orbits, which scientists believe is evidence of their distant place of origin. The idea of the existence of the Oort cloud was supposed to provide an explanation for their origin. These comets, due to the chaotic nature of their orbits, should either collide with the Sun or one of the planets, or be ejected from the solar system due to planetary perturbation. Additionally, since they consist of volatile substances and periodically approach the Sun, its radiation should gradually evaporate them. Oort hypothesized that comets may have formed not on their current orbits, but spent almost their entire existence in the outer cloud. According to assumptions, this region is a remnant of the protozoa nebula that gave birth to planets and the Sun. The primary nebula in the center was much denser, leading to the relatively rapid formation of planets. However, the outer region was significantly more diffuse, and, as a result, the processes of forming celestial bodies in it are still ongoing. Oort studied 19 different comets and concluded that they often originate from a certain area located 20,000 astronomical units away, starting with an initial velocity of one kilometer per second. Such a speed suggests that the birthplace of comets is within the solar system, as extraterrestrial bodies typically have velocities around 20 times greater. The Oort cloud, as theorized, comprises two distinct regions, the spherical outer Oort cloud and the disc-shaped inner Oort cloud. The estimated distance to the inner boundaries of it from the Sun is approximately one light year. The outer boundary of the Oort cloud, on the other hand, defines the gravitational boundary of the solar system, the Hill sphere extending to two light years for the entire solar system. The outer part of the Oort cloud serves as an approximate boundary for the solar system. It is believed that this cosmic cloud harbors no less than a billion embryos of future comets. These are bodies freely orbiting along their paths that have not yet approached the Sun. According to Oort's theory, there are over a dozen billion such bodies within the cloud. Additionally, an equal number of matured comets, those that have encountered the main star of our system, can be found there. These are the comets with tails that people can observe from Earth. By the way, the orbits of comets will later depend on their mutual approaches, the attraction of stars neighboring the Sun, and possibly the gravitational pull of celestial bodies similar to planets or stars directly within the Oort cloud. So it seems we've covered what this cloud represents, a space at the edge of the solar system where billions of comets call home. But does this region have any other peculiarities? As it turns out, there are more than enough peculiarities. First and foremost, it's worth mentioning that the properties of the Oort cloud vary at different distances from the Sun. Beyond Pluto and the Keeper belt, the Oort cloud has yet to begin. 
Its outer boundaries are separated by a considerable gap, followed by the inner space of the cloud. In this region, the movement of comet bodies is no different from the familiar movement of planets. They possess stable and, in most cases, circular orbits. However, in the outer part of the cloud, comets move as they please. In different planes, influenced by the gravitational pull of the Sun or other stars, there is information that around 26,000 years from now, Alpha Centauri will approach the Sun so closely that a stream of comets deviated from their orbits in the Oort cloud will head towards Earth and other planets. There is a possibility that such comet bombardments occurred earlier. It is precisely during these moments that the process of planet formation and shaping intensified. It is estimated that as long as our planet exists, extraterrestrial stars have pierced the inner space of the Oort cloud about a dozen times, enhancing the movement of comets thousands of times. This phenomenon lasts approximately 400,000 years, during which around 200 comets fall to Earth on average, considered a genuine cosmic shower within the realm of science. Now let's move on to the most interesting part. The Oort cloud has not yet been seen. Firstly, because it is too sparse. Secondly, it is practically unilluminated by the Sun, but the main reason is that we are directly inside it. Earthly spacecraft like Voyagers would have to fly for several hundred more years to reach its boundary. In simpler terms, there is no evidence of its existence. Nevertheless, scientists have been fortunate enough to observe other nebulae similar to the Oort cloud. They have registered barely noticeable disks with the same gaps around stars located close to us. The Oort cloud is a vast and distant cloud, consisting of trillions of icy objects surrounding our solar system. This enormous area remains inaccessible for direct observation. However, by observing long-period comets originating from the Oort cloud, we can gain insights into this mysterious region. Sooner or later, humans may succeed in witnessing this area live. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for new exciting videos about the wonders of our universe. Write in the comments what you would like to learn in the next video. Thanks, and see you next time.